Our reading today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 38 to 41. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. May the Lord add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. We pray. Gracious God, speak to us through your word today. Help us to hear the gentle whisper that calls our names and then rise to the challenge. Amen. At the risk of starting a quiet war, I wonder what your answer might be if I asked which political party you tend to vote for. I'm forever grateful that we don't have a similar situation to that in the US where identifying with a political party is a little like choosing sides in an all-out war. By the same token, even here in New Zealand there are staunch National Party members and staunch Labour Party members who can sometimes give every indication that they're ready to trade blows. While things have become a little murkier over the last few years with the rise of the Green Party, ACT and the Māori Party, many people still become very agitated if their party of choice is brought into question. If I was to stand here and say something like, Thank goodness the Labour Party are in power. Or, it was a disaster when National lost so many seats. There would be people whose backs would go up and claws come out. It's the same, though generally a more good-natured level, when we cheer for our rugby or netball or cricket teams. My brother lives in Boston and went to an ice hockey game the other night. When asked who he was cheering for, it was the Dallas Stars, a team based nearly 3,000 kilometres from where he lives, because, well, that's where his wife hails from. We will give each other a hard time over who we support and why we support them. I have to confess that after nearly 20 years living in the South, I'm, sorry to say, but still inclined to cheer for the Blues when they play the Highlanders, although I definitely do it under my breath. It seems to be the nature of the beast for us to pick sides. If I'm watching a game where I don't have an investment in the teams, I will end up cheering for one side over the other. You can see this happening when John comes to Jesus to complain about someone casting out demons in Jesus' name. Jesus, he doesn't belong to our gang. He's not one of us. Tell him to stop. There's a sense of stamping the foot and clenching the fists and a completely undeserved enmity going on. How dare he do our thing? I'm going to go out on a limb here and suggest that every one of us has done similar at some stage of our lives, most likely at many stages of our lives. This is my patch. This is my thing. This is my team. How dare they? Creeping even further out on a limb, I would suggest that many of us have done the same thing in and about church. I've been sitting there for years. How dare that person sit there? This is the kind of music we have in our church. How dare they play something different? I run an excellent after-school kids club. How dare the church down the road start one up too? I'm in charge of the kitchen. How dare they go in and just take over? I'm the minister of the church. There's no way some other minister is doing anything while I'm not there. The list goes on. We are all likely guilty in one way or another. I'm going to go into Jesus' voice here and I'll let you know when I come out. Although it's entirely imaginary, I hope it will help you to hear what is going on here. Stop, says Jesus. Listen to yourselves. None of your outrage is about what God is or is not doing in this situation. It's entirely focused on yourselves. You feel as though someone has stepped uninvited into your patch and your defensive hackles have gone up without pausing to think it through. 
So let's do just that. Let's think it through together. First up, this other guy, the one casting out demons. We'll call him the third person. He may not be wearing the team colours, but he's clearly cheering for our team. That matters. He's on our side. What he is doing is to the benefit of God's kingdom. So what is it that's going on here? First up, someone is afflicted by demons. I think we can all agree that's not a good thing. Then you guys were nowhere to be found. And this person afflicted by demons wanted to get better. So a third person comes along and does just what you would have done. That is, they cast out the demon in my name. That seems like it's a good thing, doesn't it? So the problem is not with what the third person did. The problem is that they are not you. But wait, you might say, this third person clearly doesn't have the training we have. Well, that's possible. But we have no way of actually knowing that for sure. We'll leave that for a moment and ask about the outcome. Was the demon cast out? Yes. Was the afflicted person better afterward than before? Well, we don't know because nobody told us, but we can lightly assume that they were healthier than they had been. And what about the third person, the one you're complaining about? They've used my name to cast out a demon. They're not going to turn around in the next breath and say what a terrible person I am. It would make a mockery of what they've just done. All in all, it feels like a win-win situation. Sick people that you had no time to see get well, and God's kingdom grows a little further. Surely that's a good thing? This third person is obviously for us for the things we are doing and for the things we're teaching. Are they us? No. Does that matter? Not at all. We can't do the whole ends of the earth thing on our own. We have to trust that God will raise up people who will take the good news and share it further than we can ever manage on our own. Which brings me back to the main point of this little story. You are upset at what is happening because you've decided that this third person is not on your side. You've no foundation for that other than the fact you don't know them. You haven't taken time to get to know them. You've made a snap decision based on an unfounded feeling. The potential result of that snap decision based on an unfounded feeling is people missing out on the chance of their lives being changed for the better. Now listen to me closely. Whoever, that's right, whoever. It doesn't matter whether you know them or not. It doesn't matter the colour of their skin or the language they speak or the fragrance of their perfume. It doesn't matter whether they drive on the left or the right. They have money or nothing at all. It doesn't matter. Whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. Do they go to your church? Doesn't matter. Do they like the same songs? Doesn't matter. Do they read the same translation of the scriptures? Doesn't matter. Do they avoid church, not sing and not read the Bible? Actually, it doesn't matter. If they give you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ, they will by no means lose the reward. Coming out of Jesus' voice now, this is me speaking. My point here is that picking a side when the work of the kingdom is being done is counterproductive. It ends up meaning that instead of investing into what God is doing, you invest in arguing over who is doing what. Let me give you an example. I used to run a reasonably successful youth group in a challenging neighbourhood. There was a huge amount of emotional, physical and financial investment in what we were doing. We connected with a lot of young people. Twice over that time, other groups came in and poached my kids. One was a big, well-resourced church that had nothing else to do with our community. They bust the kids in and they bust them out. We took a huge hit in numbers. 
It made me really angry, at least until the novelty wore off and the kids started coming back to our group. Then, a little later, a second, this time local group, came in and poached my kids. I will likely always remember turning up to youth group to find just three kids had turned up instead of the usual 20 to 25. (laughs) I was furious. In both cases, we kept going because the kids who kept coming needed us. And after a little while, our our wanderers would return and we kept going. They'd gone for the excitement, but they came back for the love and the ongoing commitment. I'll be honest with you. I lost quite a bit of productive, creative time being mad at these other groups. It did me no good, and in the end it made absolutely no difference to anything I or anyone else did in the meantime. I had picked a side and it was totally counterproductive. I gained nothing, the kids gained nothing, and the other groups I had bad-mouthed along the way gained nothing. As a result, we were all going backwards. How good is that for God's kingdom? The disciples were picking a side, and it was doing no good for them, for the other people involved, or for the kingdom of God. Let me put this into our context. I believe God is doing a new thing. It isn't a new thing among us. It's a new thing that involves others who don't belong to our networks, who don't fit with our programs or practices. It's likely a new thing that will make us uncomfortable because we don't understand how it works or the people who are a part of it. They will cast out demons in Jesus' name. And our first instinct will be to want to stop them. We need to hear the voice of Jesus reminding us, whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. There will be warning signs when something is clearly wrong. There will also be warning signs when things are clearly of God. The second set of signs will warn us to support and encourage because this is in the name of Christ. We need wisdom and discernment to be able to see which thing is going on. And then we need courage to step back and watch what God is doing without us and pray for those third people with all our strength. I don't have a question for you to ponder this morning. I suspect there are questions enough without me adding to them. Let's take a moment to ponder what God is saying to us, individually and jointly. We pray. Jesus, we are sorry for the times when we make our faith all about us and then lock out those others who are for you but don't fit on our roadmap. Grant us discernment to recognize those things that you are doing that don't involve us. And then give us the courage to support from the sidelines. Not because it's our team, but because it's your team. Help us to be really good at what we do and amazing supporters of what others do too. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to sing a song today that may be new to some of you. Good, good Father. We sing.